morning everybody and welcome to another kerfuffle webinar and i am delighted to have today a debutant on the show nick truman from spec digital how are you my friend you okay i'm very well thank you how are you doing simon good absolutely cushy not bad yeah it, all, it almost feels summery outside or something <laughs> it's it's cold today <laughs> manchester anyway so yeah it's good um, look, and, and, and so, so Nick, we're here today to talk about Spec Digital. You uh, work with a few of our other partners on the website, uh, SEO specialists, PPC specialists there. But critically, that today is really about uh, getting more, generating more leads through your website, which of course is going to be pretty much on. I'd be surprised if there's not an agent out there that uh, that wants more of that. So. Um, could you just give us a bit of kind of background about just yourself and the business, just so with, so that it tees it up so people know, know how you've come into this industry? Yeah, sure. A good metaphor I use for my career is a helix. So kind of going round but going up at the same time. And the reason I say that is geographically, I've gone in a massive circle. So I'm based down in Surrey. And when I was about sort of 16, 17, I was working for a PPC agency a couple of doors down from where I am today, where I'm literally sitting right now in our office, which is a, a luxury so, these days. It all, do, all, it all leads back to where you started, you see. It yeah. does, it does. If I go in the next the next step again, then we've got a massive problem. But um, <laughs> anyway, so I quit that um, when I was about 19, started my own business, uh, PPC agency, learn SEO on the job, just making changes to people's sites, often doing a lot of it for free or on a results basis. You know, if I can improve it and generate some leads for these little companies we're working with, They'll then pay us some money. Learn SEO, got very good at it, sold the business to some guys in London. So I kind of went right up, right up to town from Surrey. And then in London, we would, uh, they were doing a lot of experiential marketing. So I then became one of their sort of digital marketing directors of the business yeah. and swallowed up their social media department and web department, that sort of stuff. Um, of course, none of that was official because nobody wants to be swallowed up by a, a sort of 22-year-old um, <laughs> as a team leader. But um, yeah, it was basically involved in pretty much everything from SEO to PPC to social to web. The company itself was called Collider. Those guys did the laser show for the Shards and worked with ITV, Sony. And then a couple of big digital projects we worked on were for G Technology, as in the hard drives you get in the Apple store. Um, we built some microsites for some of our big TV partners. Um, and then we also did quite a big project for Kate Spade New York in the e-commerce space. Anyway, realized I was an employee. So 2015, I, um, I left on good terms and, and sort of moved on. And uh, I didn't want to run an agency. The second time I tried to escape the... PPC SEO industry and thought, I don't want to be an agency. It's lots of smoke and mirrors. You could get away with not doing a lot. I need to make a difference. And the ultimate question is, what do I want to do? And the output of that was, I wanted to grow businesses. So I went around this massive loop again of, let's become an entrepreneur. Let's get a fund. Let's get loads of startups. Let's employ a team of ninjas. And I could just come up with business ideas and they'll execute them. All these ideas were absolutely awful. And what somebody pointed out to me is, my skill set is in digital. It's in the ability to generate leads, to ge generate customer acquisition. So whether it's a lead gen organization, like most of the people listening in today will be lead generation. You want leads from the website. They fill out a form and there they are. And then the other side as well was generating revenue for e-commerce websites. So TK Maxx was a big client I picked up at that time and worked with them for two and a half years. I was their SEO department for two and a half years. Um, but that involved me consulting and getting all of their teams doing all the execution and work for me. Um, we replatformed the website, which cost millions. It's still the website that's, that's live today. I also got to do some work for Adidas, Deloitte, m and all through some of the connections I met there. And then I sort of took a step back and said, look, this is going somewhere now. Why don't we grow businesses using my skill set in SEM PPC, the ability to let, generate leads? But let's create some mantras and some mottos, which spec, which is my business today. And um, the shell of spec has been running for 10 years. We had our anniversary Thursday last week, our 10-year anniversary. Um, I'm slightly older than I look, as you can probably tell. Um, but yeah, around that point, so the whole reason we the whole reason we sort of branded as Spec and started employing the team that we've got today, and the team is ever expanding. It's over doubled in since June last year, so we're growing nicely. Lockdown has not been kind to us, but we've managed to keep growing through it anyway. I was going to um, ask you that question though. Mm. Can, why why has it been unkind to you? Because surely, uh, in a more digital world, wouldn't you expect that your 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 um, what you provide is more needed than ever? Sure. I mean, we've been presented with more challenges than ever. So we were growing already coming into this or into last year, into twenty twenty. Um, our growth continued at the same rate, if not plateaued slightly. We were still growing though, and don't get me wrong. I look at restaurants, private gyms, and 
you know, I shed a tear for them. I, I cannot believe how the government has treated them. And I won't get political on this call. Um, but I think any government, you know, would have acted in the way our government has. And it's been absolutely, you know, criminal in the way that they've been looked after. No fault of their own. I don't think cash was even the problem. I think people should have been allowed to work on furlough, for example. So actually sales teams could work on marketing for when the world does return to normal. Yeah. Cost the government the same, but the business output and the business foundation is now stronger, ready for the bounce, which I think there will be a bounce. But yeah, um, we continue to grow. But the problems that are presented to us as a consultancy, and that was eventually the, the outcome of what I was saying a minute ago, is that we became a consultancy, which is to make a difference for our clients. So we offer training and coaching through everything we do, every project we deliver, this webinar. I hope people walk away from watching this, knowing something different and thinking differently and focusing less on meta descriptions and title tags and all the technical stuff and Google's latest trend in Google ads. Focus on how we're going to generate good customers to our business and bring yeah. marketing into digital marketing. That's, that's our kind of mantra. So with all of that in mind, lockdown became really, really challenging for us to communicate as a team. And for the first three or four months, I think clients were very, very lenient with us and we were very lenient with them. There'd be questions across the Zoom call that were like, oh, have you worked on this? You know, from one of our team to another one of our team of, oh, have you done that yet? Because they just weren't aware because they're not in the office. Yeah. So internal communications like half an hour on Zoom here and there constantly or just click the call button on Slack and have a conversation versus in the office where it's like, oh, so-and-so and so-and-so, can I grab you for two seconds? We should do this. Oh, yeah, it's a great idea. Yeah, yeah, we'll make that happen. Great stuff, right? Yeah, let's let's bring that into the call next week with the client. Done. And that took me, what, 20 seconds to communicate. Yeah. Getting on a Zoom call takes 20 minutes, minimum. Yeah. Right, guys, I've been thinking about this. Here's how we should do that. Oh, can you still hear me? Is the video working? Absolute nightmare. And where we would normally have a one-hour meeting face-to-face -face with anyone from our team working on the project and anyone from the client's teams that need to be there, et cetera, that's now become three or four hours of calls a month. So. <laughs> That's really interesting. So that whole creative, collaborative side, of course, is is mm. has been has been has been uh, stimulated, hasn't it, by this whole process? Haven't Massively. Really that. Yeah, and as you said, sometimes you can you can think that the the likes of Zoom are very efficient in that you're not doing all the travelling around, but you are missing yeah. out on that that ability to bounce off ideas left, right, and centre very quickly, aren't you, when you're with people? Yeah, I I mean I think everyone's going to be back in the office pretty much full time. The challenge is if you get everybody in three or four days a week. Home days now feel like a kind of half holiday because mm. it's a it is a more you're taking me from a corporate environment to a more casual environment. So what's the productivity going to be at home? And a lot of businesses now, which staff are not happy about. We've not done this. We're too small to need this. But they're literally setting up tools to see how productive people are. Yeah. So it'll monitor, you know, cursor clicks on the mouse and, you know, like, oh, hang on a minute. They seem to be having, you know, eight, 10 minute breaks a day now. And it's like, no, no, I was just on a call. Like, you know, yeah. and, those conversations, you never want to have those with your staff. You no, want to trust people. It's a very big brother, that, doesn't it? Ultimately, you should be judged on the actual productivity of what you're, you know, whether somebody is uh, watching an episode of Loose Women. Yeah. If they choose to work at two o'clock in the morning to make up for that, as long as it's not, you know, a time specific related job like customer service can't, you know, uh, obviously, exactly. it can't be, then who cares, really? But anyway, so, so that's, that's been a challenge for us is just working yeah. out, you know, how do we communicate? And for, for most of the business, it's, it's resulted pretty well. And what's been interesting is when I've sort of said, look, lockdown's, you know, sort of finished or lockdown hasn't really affected whether you can go into the office or not. It's, the advice has changed, you know, work at home if you can. So we've been then, if, you know, if cases are high, et cetera, we're completely, no one's allowed in the office at all. Yeah. Unless, yeah. unless your internet's broken and now you cannot work from home. That's the rule. But yeah. yeah, I mean, this week, for example, people are coming in a bit more and we've got social distancing up in the office. But yeah, people are desperate to get in. And I think people quite like to working at home and stuff. And then around sort of October, so, well, so October, sorry, August, September time, people started coming in a bit. And then when I caught up with them and said, how you find it? They were like, I miss this. I didn't realize so much. You know, you don't know how good something is until it's gone. And then suddenly when it's back, it's like, well, that tastes nice, actually. And, you know, people coming into the office and going, I just get so much more done here. Like, you know, I thought it's nice not being interrupted, but I'm not working in silo anymore. And we've got a couple of people that do, they do things that nobody else does. So actually they don't have a reason to communicate with others. And it's like, well, you need to be in a team environment. We need you in the office. You need to go out on lunch breaks with people and have someone to bounce ideas off, even if they're not involved. And so yeah, that, that's been the real challenge for us. But I mean, don't get me wrong. We've been getting, the way we generate leads as a business has changed. I mean, partly why we're with Kerfuffle now, you know, we've, we're talking to quite a few Kerfuffle agents about what we do and about some of the challenges they've had and the fact that, you know, stamp duty is disappearing. We need to do more. We need to invest the extra money we've got at the moment to, you know, to give us a bit more longevity, et cetera. And we'll talk about them more as we go through, but I think there's been challenges by all means. And I think Zoom and Slack and Trello and 
it's just not the same. And some people sometimes have said, oh, can we chat for five minutes? And a message I've sent them said, oh, could you crack on with this? And to one person that's like, oh, yeah, yeah, cool, mate. I'll crack on to this. But it's like, all right, that's a bit direct. You know, like, <laughs> you know, how about a hello, how are you? And it's like, yeah. well, we hired you during lockdown so you don't you don't know that actually i'm pretty laid back you could you could you know absolutely catastrophically screw up and i'd just go yep i'd run myself and go absolutely fine you've told me that's all i ask and we'll fix it that's, you know, that's my approach to management but... so so seo you know uh ppc these are these are phrases that you know most agents will uh will will recognize and sure. but, some, some of it fairly superficially. You know, if I am an estate agent, why do I need to understand those better? I think if we take a step back for a sec and then come into that, again, as a consultancy for us, it's a, we're, we're not an agency. Like we're not just going to give you some recommendations for SEO. You need to look at the wider picture because that's what Google looks at. And more importantly than that, it's what customers look at. They're yeah. not going to even phone you up if they can't see reviews and, what houses you've sold and what you've got on the market at the moment, et cetera. So looking at the wider picture for a second, Google, so SEO and PPC for a sec, Google, if you look at buying intent, they're not going on Google because they've been sent there or because there's an idea or an ad's popped up and they've gone, oh, that looks nice and clicked on it. You know, if I see a picture of a nice house and it's like, you know, under the budget I'm planning in five years time for my next home, I might click on it. And if I click on it, it's cost somebody some money. If I've gone on Google and typed in, estate agents near me in terms of buying intent i'm probably selling soon yeah because otherwise i would search houses for sale or i'd search the road or i'd see a for sale sign and i would then do a really long tail keyword of like you know high street number four kennedy's which is a one near me kennedy's you know what are they doing right now and how much is that house that's quite a long tail like you know they're ready to buy so if you've typed that in then, you know, we want them on our site, whether they're whether we are Kennedy's or not, whether they've used the word Kennedy's or not. We want them on our site if we've got a house for sale in that street. So you've got this kind of micro level. Also, if people then are just going, I want an estate agent. You wouldn't type in if you were looking to buy something. You just start looking at, you know, stuff that's for sale at the moment or houses for sale, my area. Um, and we do optimize all of that as well. But the sellers are the ones you really want to capture. So if they type in estate agents, uh, you know, Crawley, which is near, down near me, near Gatwick, yeah. Um, estate agent Crawley, you're looking for an estate agent. You've clearly got a need for a service. You're not looking to buy a house right now. You're probably a seller. So if yeah. you've not optimized your site for that, the re you know, the sort of why should I care? Um, all your competitors, we well, certainly competitors doing well and growing from this will be there. And you've got a super kind of, I won't say buy ready, I'll say sell ready customer. And you don't know how big their property is, whatever size it is. You want the sellers because, you know, estate agent really is a, a supply and demand game. And the supply is always the tricky side. You know, the Zoopla and Rightmove, we'll talk about them as, as we go through. And um, Zoopla and Rightmove do a pretty good job as far as I'm concerned. There's reasons I absolutely hate them. But um, they do a pretty good job in just listing properties and making it easy to find. And they, they, you know, they surface all the estate agents for properties. But sellers especially, those are the ones you really want to capture through Google Maps, through SEO, that sort of thing. Okay, so generating, when you want to talk about when generating leads from a website, then obviously in terms of people mm. will understand you with, with those long, uh, long uh, tail phrases and everything else there. But from an estate agency website, what are the various ways that you would look to obviously uh, optimize leads, lead generation mm. from it? I think there's, there's sort of several layers to this. Um, I use the analogy of onions a lot. I need to find a better analogy because an onion only has so many layers, whereas I want to find something that is infinite. You know, every time, almost like Inception is probably a better analogy. Um, but I think on one level, um, any existing traffic you've got in the site, you know, and that could be coming from SEO, brand awareness, direct, newspapers. Some of it could be generated by Zoopla, right? Move. Anyone that lands on the site, you want to go and use your site as a customer. Yeah. Really good idea to do with this. And she's getting a bit old now, but I use my nan quite a lot um, in the past with really complicated websites. And we play the game of, I call her up, we go on Zoom and I share my screen and go, right now, and you tell me where to click or whatever on this website. I'm going to start the timer as soon as I click share. How long to work out what this company does? You know, things like that. And it's yeah. not so difficult for estate agents because I think generally speaking, it's pretty obvious you're buying and selling houses. Um, but I think the first layer you want to look at is existing traffic into the sites. And probably talk to your web partners, you know, and again, we work with some of the web partners in Kerfuffle. Web Daddy is, is one who I'll shout out. You know, we're this official partnership we've got with those guys. Um, yeah. But Web Daddy, for example, will optimize the site and they'll make sure that the forms are obvious, the call to action is obvious. And one of the things we often do on a website when we're looking at, okay, generating leads from the existing traffic, and we'll talk about new traffic in a sec, 
Um, but generating leads from the existing traffic, we often talk about um, what is your um, content breakdown in terms of percentages. So how much content is targeted at sellers? Yeah. And I'll be really frank, it's normally one or two pages. And that's your, tar that's your target with the site. You almost want more sellers than buyers. It's never going to happen, of course, because yep. buyers will be browsing all day. Sellers might look at two or three agents. There's always going to be a lower volume. But if you could have more sellers than buyers, you'd absolutely kill it. In yeah. all of your locations, you would be the number one agent every year without fail. But you only have one or two pages actually talking about, you know, selling your home with us. So what you want to do is you want to look at what percentage of your website content is talking about selling your home, what content of your what percentage of content is talking about buying, what percentage is talking about then other stuff like you might have agricultural land for sale, you might have um, commercial property, you might have uh, mortgage advisories and all the other things that come in. So sometimes it's good a good experiment just to look at like you know how much do we talk about our offices, how much do we talk about buying, how much do we talk about selling, and then have a think about well what traffic's coming into our site and how do we make the most of that by having it's not necessarily more information as well. It could just be clearer and better information. So simple things you could do is like on every single property page, just have a little section somewhere that says thinking of selling your home, free yeah. valuation or whatever. And Nick, it is incredible, isn't it? As you said, estate mm. sites, to be fair, are usually, you know, are, are, are much better than many businesses that, you know, that do suffer from that bounce because you go on there and five minutes in, you still haven't got a Scooby do what they're doing. Estate yeah. agents don't normally suffer from that, but they definitely suffer from that element that you just speak about there. Sometimes just trying to find that thinking of selling with us uh, mm. resources for the potential vendor, um, that, that, that becomes a lot less common, doesn't it? Yeah, absolutely. I think the other thing as well is to think about what is the user journey? Like if somebody comes in your site and they're thinking of selling a house uh, or thinking of selling their home or their flat or something, what are they going to search on Google? Where are they going to land? And therefore, what is the journey? And actually, yeah. what, what always happens, regardless of industry, regardless of what you sell and buy and do and services you offer, everybody gets so pigeonholed into thinking like because you know the site you know where to find that content you've got to think about customers and think do they know is it obvious to them can they find it easily and actually one of the things we found is a lot of sellers for example they type in house prices in whatever road houses for sale in this road because what's the first thing they want to know what's the value of my home so actually offering a free valuation probably isn't the best call to action in a lot of scenarios it does vary from agent to agent depending on what sort of stock you generally hold in terms of the properties you, you list so actually if you list a lot of properties that are quite high value then actually you might want to go down the route of you know a bespoke valuation and actually talk about the fact that you have a database of sellers you can reach out to because it's probably you know if it's a 20 million pound house it's probably not going to go or property you call it a property at that level it's not going to go out on general sale it's not going to be on zoopla necessarily it's probably going to be a, we'll give it to the right agent and they'll reach out to the right people, the right property investors, or they know all the local footballers and business people and whatever else. So again, the way you talk about things, that website yeah. needs to be completely different to one that's just, you know, central London, hard and fast flat rentals, you know, lets and, lets and rentals for flats only. That needs to be about ease, about the fact when, you know, we'll help you move in, about the fact you've got a 24-7 contact if anything goes wrong in the house. USPs are very, very different. And I think that's where, we have it in all industries. It's not unique to this. Retail, for example, every e-commerce website where you can buy products looks like Amazon and eBay, and none of them are anything like Amazon and eBay. They are not marketplaces. This I is a brand. You, you must have heard it. Certainly our friends at Web Daddy and indeed any of the web providers, mm. the amount of agents that will get on. I just want, uh, can you give me the web, uh, the Foxton's website? That, that strikes me the kind of... You know, and, and forgetting everything that flows into that to make that this. Yeah, you're looking at you're looking at eight figures for one of them. Sorry, well, <laughs> With it, all the infrastructure that goes behind it, and an annual maintenance that would make you weep, wouldn't it? So yeah, it's that's okay. Well, that makes perfect sense to me there. So look, mm. the other the other element is, of course, is so you've got that on one one element, what the vital part of it, the age and so old own website and everything else yep. but you've got everything that flows to that the website so you are spoiled for choice aren't you in terms of you know the different sources so you've got google you've got facebook you've got linkedin um you know the the up and coming players the instagrams and things like that yep. what what are, which works best and is it as simplistic as that or yeah. are, there, are there different traffic sources for different disciplines for example you know i've often heard said that linkedin works better for landlords uh generation things like that just talk us through those different sources and the part they play 
Yeah, definitely. Again, I use an analogy. I'm massive on metaphors, certainly in the last year, given that I can't draw stuff on a whiteboard in a meeting room. Um, imagine like a target board, okay, yeah. and in the middle is the bullseye. That's yeah. someone going on Google, and Google is always, which is why we focus on it. We do work on the other channels, but Google is always the focus. The bullseye is somebody going, houses for sale in Luton, yeah. and you're an estate agent in Luton. They're yeah. looking to buy a house. They might be looking to sell. There'll be some sell traffic in there that are just looking at what is the average house price at the moment? What's a good time to sell? How does my house compare to the other ones on the market? All that sort of, do I need to decorate it first? Are we going to move in three months or are we going to move in, in a year? There's no, some... there's no dark arts there, is there? There's not sort of, they're saying explicitly what they want to do and you're then yeah. in that requirement. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And if you do it via SEO, the traffic costs nothing. You just have to pay somebody like us to do, do the actual con you know, consultancy side of like helping you write content and writing the strategy of how to do it all. Then you'll need your web guys to make changes, but you're not paying every time somebody clicks, which you will on the advertising sides, which is still part of Google. So Google for me is the center of the target. You write a keyword list, you yeah. can work out. And again, something we do as a consultancy is an agency would write a keyword list and go, right, we're going to get to number one on SEO. We're going to run some ads to these keywords. If you type that in, we're going to be there. It's a bit simplistic. So the next thing we do is we write a strategy based on those keywords and pull out some learnings and go, actually, people in your area, some of them call them properties and they tend to be bigger properties yeah. so actually do we want to split the site into two and have one for like the general market and one for properties on the senior market etc google is always the middle of the target one of the issues we get a lot and it is an issue and we're quite good at just kind of gently and politely putting it to death quite quickly is someone gets back you know from the pub one night drops us an email and goes my mate said at the pub that facebook's the next big thing and we sort of like well, it's been around for a while so it's if it was going to be the next big thing, it would be there already. Um, Facebook is good for local brand awareness, yeah. for getting really detailed with some targeting, but you're going to need to pay for it. You're going to have to advertise on there. Doing things organically on Facebook doesn't really work anymore. I mean, I, for example, the other day, I went through the list of uh, pages I follow, like that I like just yeah. personally on my Facebook, and only about four or five out of about 400 actually it's appear on my feed. Because it's Facebook prioritise the ones they think are interesting to you today and you do just get into that you know people have asked you to like it so you get in and like it yourself don't you and as you said how can you possibly realistically be big fans of all of those different brands really the classic one and i hate to say it is where your mate's wife is painting canvas prints in her spare time or your your mate's just started he's just yeah. started his own on the side roofing company at weekends and they yeah. ask all their mates to like it and i sometimes drop them a note going do you want to buy me a beer and I'll give you a bit of advice about this? You know, like you're going about this completely the wrong way. You want to get a website, you want a Google Maps pin and you'll be sorted, you know, and you'll get one phone call a month and that'll keep you busy, you know, that kind of thing. And that'll make you two grand for a roofing job a month or something. But I think, yeah, Facebook, Facebook's a tough one because you do need to advertise to do anything. You can target people that have recently shown an interest. You can retarget. You can also upload your entire database of recent sellers and buyers um, and then run a lookalike audience to that. You need to be GDPR um, um, compliant yeah. to do that. And I'm not a lawyer, so I won't comment on it, but just make sure you are. Um, yeah. LinkedIn is a similar sort of thing. LinkedIn's a bit more user friendly. And as you say, landlords, there are a lot of them on LinkedIn. The problem is when we've uh, profiled landlords with our estate agent clients, the ones that, you know, the dream one with like, you know, 30 properties, yeah. 10, are, 10 are big. Like the office I'm in right now is part of a fund. And it's owned by a private landlord who lives on the beach in Portugal. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to buy an office because I dream of being, you know, I dream of joining or replacing him on the beach when he passes away because he's in his 80s now. Yeah. And then when I'm in my 80s, I'll, I'll take his spot on the beach in, in Portugal. Um, but th the problem is he's not on LinkedIn, but he's the dream client. He's got loads of commercial property. He's got loads of residential property. He owns local shops and retail as well. Um, you know, half this street I'm in right now there's one maintenance guy who looks after half the streets. He owns yeah. almost all the property before the laws changed. So he's owned it all for like 30 years or something. Apparently, that was the better option than getting a pension back in the 80s and 90s, which, you know, I, I've, I've, read, I've read the reports and gone, why was I born so late? Like, you know, why, why did I not get involved in this sooner? Um, but I think the, yeah, the challenge with LinkedIn and the challenge in LinkedIn really is the landlords. That some of them will be on there, but actually you're probably targeting a lot of the fund managers Okay. And that sort of thing for commercial. Is there, isn't there also an issue with LinkedIn that just engagement is? I mean, there's a lot of information mm. on there, isn't there? But in, uh, unlike the way, you know, so, I mean, Twitter certainly you're engaging with on a minute, a minute by minute basis. Same with yeah. Facebook. 
Facebook. You know, uh, the, the problem you've got with, with LinkedIn is it's something people dip in and out of very, very uh, sporadically, don't they? Yeah, yeah, exactly. I think, I mean, you're only going to pay for the people that do engage. Yeah. But the, the way the algorithms work is they're going to try and put you in front of people that do engage because that's when they get paid rather than the people that are going to buy. So actually, if you would, if there are only 10 people that are ready to buy today, your services in your area, et cetera, or, you know, rent out some properties via you guys or, buy, or even buy a house, depending on, you know, you might be targeting people that have just got a promotion at work. You know, yeah. that, that's not a bad idea. But again, it's when the iron's hot, they're going to go on Google. That, that really is the problem. I hear, I hear people talk as well with LinkedIn that actually you need to be spending some serious cash in terms of advertising to really make it's it. It's all work. advertising. Everything I'm talking about right now is advertising on LinkedIn. So the difference with LinkedIn and Google, though, is LinkedIn is more professional. So you can target based on job role. Yeah, so which, you could target anyone that's moved job in the last six months that has the word senior or manager in yeah. their job. Or, or better than that, director, CTO, CEO, et cetera, or anybody that's recently... Um, recently left the role with the word director or CEO because they so, might have a, a wallet full of cash. So Nick, really, the data accuracy, so, so forgive me, that's my, my old CRM background, but the data accuracy then is very, is very tight, isn't it? It's really good with uh, LinkedIn because as long as people are keeping on top of that, you are going to know... Oh, yeah. As long as they've updated it. As long as they've updated, yeah. Uh, that's right. I think I kept, I've kept. i been on at businesses that I've left a few years before, but anyway, I understand that. Okay, good. So... Yeah. So in terms of that, so, so that I understand that in terms of looking at those the, the the main three there. So what do you recommend? I mean, is 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 there do you, if you've got a limited budget, do you spread yourself thinly? Do you invest in one and and um, prioritize what what just on that kind of um, you know before you've got before before you've got the ability to spend across the board? What do you do? Our approach is that everybody should have a limited budget when they first talk to somebody like us. And when it works, well, let's scale it. Because if it works, it's going to generate you income. You're going to sell more properties. And if we can do anything to push them over the line digitally quicker or get you more inquiries, <coughs> then that is exactly what we should do. Let's do that. I think the if you've got a limited budget, my advice would always be SEO. Yeah. And, uh, because SEO is going to generate something more long term. So you're going to have to wait a little bit longer for the result. But when the result comes in, it's pretty bulletproof. You're going to have to do something pretty catastrophic, like launch a new website and not migrate any of your SEO content to lose it. Yeah. And the other thing with SEO is if you do it properly, your priority list should look something like this. And this is all off the top of my head. So if I miss anything, apologies. Oh, um, the first thing you should probably look at is get a keyword list and just look at quick wins. Are we mentioning these keywords on yeah. the website? And some of the answers to those might be no. And it's going to be quite a big, complicated fix. So WebDaddy and us, for example, have been rolling out a whole new area of WebDaddy's platform that's exclusive to spec clients because it's something we've built with them and invested our time and their time to build for free, basically. You know, a client hasn't been paying the bills sort of thing. Yeah. Um, but we're building something at the moment where we'll be able to populate for any number of agents a houses for sale something. So houses for sale Luton, flats for sale Luton, houses to let in Luton, houses for rent in Luton, et cetera, with sort of search results pages but there'll be static pages. So Google's got exactly what it needs to index. So based on the fact that those are the biggest keywords. So I think if you're going to do any SEO, the first thing is get a keyword list. Are we talking about these keywords on the site? Do we have pages for most of these terms? We might clump two or three keywords because they're really, really similar. We might yeah. clump houses, homes together on the same page. We might call it houses, but mention the word homes down the page. That's the quick win. And then the, the next quick win you really want to look at is Google Maps. We optimize Google Maps pins. Um, yeah. We've got a couple of franchise clients who have hundreds of locations across the UK. We've done it for TK Maxx. We launched Mamas and Papas' new website a few weeks ago. We're optimizing all of their Google pins and Yale pins and Mumsnet and anywhere else where it's good to be mentioned. It's one thing putting it on there, and that's a good start. The next thing is then knowing what to write in the description box, what to put in the title, um, how to make the location, what kind of photography to put up. Are we missing any contact details? Some of the franchise ones, for example, they are only open two hours a week. So it's like a drop in that you bring your child along and they get some extra support at school. So it's a tuition franchise. Um, and the problem is all the franchisees were putting, I'm, you know, on their Google Maps pin, Wednesday, 3 p.m. till 4 p.m. We were like, that's not when you're free to take a call. And outside of that hour every week, it's going to stay closed. So no yeah. one's going to ring you. Actually, you want to make that 24-7 pretty much. So, you know, or at least up until 8 p.m. at night, because that's when you do want to take calls. 
Yeah. No one's going to turn up unless they talk to you first and you've sent them a welcome pack and they know when it's open. So I think taking that same approach to estate agents and going, actually, why don't we extend our opening hours? Because if yeah. somebody looks at 10 p.m. at night, if we're the only estate agent on Google Maps that's currently open... You're going to get a dividend, aren't you? Exactly. Exactly. As soon as you said dividend, I just had flashbacks to my self-assessment just over a month ago. But I'll let, <laughs> we'll skip over that. But I think the... Um, yeah, I mean, that, that is exactly right. And I think the, that's just one of sort of 40, 50 things that we'll be checking and doing for estate agents. The more branches you've got, the more pins you want to have because you want to have one for each branch. Um, and then we get the questions of like, should we have multiple pins at a single branch? One for the commercial website, one for mortgages, one for estate agent. And there is no clear cut answer. But in terms of SEO, mention the keywords on the site, get yeah. your Google Maps pin sorted and work out where to send that. Because actually, if you've got 40 branches... Um, we've got a couple of sort of 30 plus branch um, estate agent clients. Yeah. We don't want to send those to the homepage. We're going to create better pages on the site where it talks about that branch. Yeah. If you're looking for Luton and you land on the site and actually there's 50 different branches here and there's three called Luton, Luton North, Luton South and Luton Central, bloody nightmare. So what you want to do is, you know, excuse my French, but what you want to do is you want to make sure you, you work out what that user journey looks like right the way through. Then the next thing you want to start doing then is the more kind of medium term SEO. So you'll get some quick wins from that. Traffic should increase from doing those things. You yeah. can also monitor within Google Maps how many people are now seeing your maps and just clicking on the phone number button. So that's not web traffic. You yeah. just bypass that now. They're on the phone. You've got the lead. So you want to check. And there's also an email address. You want to check you've got all of that sort of stuff working. Then you want to start accumulating reviews on Google Maps. You want to look at actually how do your pages function. And based on what um, website you're on, an FYI, Web Daddy, WordPress, they're all really easy to update. Yeah. Now we can start building a user journey around those keywords. So somebody's typed in houses for sale in whatever location, Birmingham, given that, you know, you mentioned you've got Birmingham accent, let's go with Brummie. So they've typed in houses for sale in Birmingham. They land on a page that says, and if it just says houses for sale, 200 results and there's the houses, yeah. you've got to think that's the first interaction they've had with your business. Yeah. They know nothing about you. So if your design's not up to scratch, that's going to turn them off. If you're just diving them straight in and sort of in retail, we call it lift and shift straight into the detail. That's not useful. Yeah. If the properties themselves don't say how many beds they are, what road they're in, what the price is, how long they've been on the market for. If you if all of them as well are like sold subject to contract, yeah. that drove me mad when I was looking to buy, buy my my latest uh, property, of, you know, recently drove me mad. I'm like, every time I find a dream property, I'm like. Bloody, you know, what? why Why are you showing me these? I don't want to see them. You want to highlight their successes, but it has a it has a debilitating effect, doesn't it? When it's, when it, as you said, it's uh, not yeah. in any stock. Let's talk about highlighting successes for a sec. Okay. Because we've, we've covered this a lot in the past, and it, this has happened for every single client. And I'll be really, really blunt. What are you trying to do with your website? You're trying to generate leads. You want people to pick up the phone. Once they picked up the phone, you can email them about properties. You can have a conversation. And when we land on clients' websites, we've got a big insurance broker on our books. And the first thing we saw on their website, it was like, welcome to whatever. We won an award recently. And in our pitch, I walked in and said, before we dive in, your award thing up there. And they all went, oh, yeah, yeah, we're very proud of that. We're very, we're like, do you reckon customers care? And the marketing director went, I like these guys. Because <laughs> she was sitting there going, I couldn't care less. And I don't think customers care. And that's our big message. And then I said, well, look, I looked in Google Analytics and your landing pages are not your homepage anyway. So it's less of an issue. But actually, what are they worried about? They're worried about, have you got what I need? What are your reviews? So blowing your own trumpet is important, but it, come, it needs to come at the right point of the journey. And the right point of the journey is not straight away. The first thing that the customer really wants is, I want to see a load of properties. I want yeah. to understand who you are. And if, you, if I've searched the state agent, I want to land somewhere. It's like, these guys are really professional, actually. They look like, they don't look too smart, but they're not casual. They're bang on budget. They look bang on budget for what I'm trying to buy or sell at the moment. It's that Goldilocks zone, isn't it? Hitting them in terms of uh, what we use Goldilocks do. scenario a lot here. So I think that's an important point, and SEO plays a big part in that because the way Google monitors that from SEO is it monitors things like what's your bounce rate. So people that have landed on the website and then bounced off, they've only viewed one page and like a bouncy ball, they bounce back off. What's yeah. your average time on site and all of that sort of stuff? That's going to be really, really low. So they're not going to want to send traffic there, especially if the other nine websites on the first page of Google. When traffic lands there, they have a great experience. They don't come back for 10 minutes. You know, yeah. and some of them come back and they only look at one more or they come back and completely change of journey now or they don't come back. They go on that site, journey's finished. They found what they're looking for. So and, I think you, and you work in a variety of different industries. How does mm. 
how does real estate, estate agency compare to other other maybe more retail based industries in terms of things like those bounce rates? And is there any point yeah. of comparing between industries? Oh, massively so. Because I think the, you think about the customers, it's like if they went to 10 different drive throughs for 10 different things. Yeah. One's a local brewery that put beer in the back of your car. The next one's B and Q's click and collect drive through. The next one's McDonald's. If they because they've just been at McDonald's and they've like ordered at one screen, tapped their card at the next, and picked it up at the next, it was all under two minutes. If they have to wait twenty minutes at the brewery, and the br they're just sitting there in a traffic jam in the rain in a very you know narrow little road where they can't see out. For this is not a great experience, is it? You know, it's not. You got to think, but they're what their expectation is, is other websites. You know, people are buying on John Lewis and Amazon and, you know, the, the biggest websites in, in the UK sort That's of thing. It's compared a lot of the time, isn't it? It can be. And there's lots of good cross learnings. But equally, I will say from working on the inside across lots of industries, some industries are absolutely dinosaur age. Mm. And we pick up clients in those pretty quick because we're like, we're going to help you be the first one to digitalize. And the, the, yeah. the MD goes, oh, I like that. You know, and as long as the, the, the commercials add up. And I think the commercials... you you need to be linking commercial data from what do people type in? Where do they land on the site? That data needs to be in your CRM. You need to know every inquiry you've got. You need to trace it back to the investment that created yeah. that inquiry. And we've not mentioned Google ads yet. And I think we won't talk about too much today because it's always a kind of, you know, year two type thing. And it's often the, we're going to get rid of right move and put the money into PPC now. So it's, it's often not the first conversation, but yeah, just to say that's, ne it's never been more true to track your data and go, how many houses have we sold and how much of that was investment on Google ads where we were paying five, 10 grand a month in some scenarios? It's that essential ROI statement, isn't it? Just very simple. How do we actually measure? Exactly. We spoke about before is, of course, the whole, the whole uh, concept of marketing is find what's working for you and double down on that until you get diminishing returns. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And I think the, you know, the, as I say, like, some industries are absolute dinosaur industries. They're prehistoric in terms of their digital footprint. And then the rest of them are all doing what they can at the moment. And I would actually put, I would actually say estate agents aren't a million miles from the retailers. The okay. retailers have much more complicated technological challenges. Let's talk, about, spectrum. Let's talk about a spectrum based on mm. your experiences. Zero being completely Luddite and, you know, put out to pass using Ask Jeeves. And uh, on the other end, you know, ten is technical excellence and using digital. There, where do you put a state agency at the moment on that on that kind of spectrum? I reckon most of them are between a sort of four and seven. Okay, that would be my gut feel. And then there's the the some of the bigger ones. They have they've done well and they look like a ten on the surface. But I would say to a lot of your listeners today and people tuning into this um, or anyone watching this back, they're not. They look like a ten. So like, and our name and shame. Not, not necessarily shame, but, you know, Knight Frank, Savills, their yeah. websites look smart. They invest a lot in their branding and they do a really good job of it. But actually, the user friendliness of their websites is not not where it needs that's, to be. That's fascinating. So, but what's, what I take from that, and I'm always looking for the mm. glass half, half full approach here, is yeah, yeah. opportunity. Well, it is, isn't it? You know, it's a, there's no glass ceiling in terms of actually you mentioned. Yes, if, if look, if they're one of those industries where they're complete luddites, you know, and they they can get a really, you know, an even bigger bang for their buck, fantastic. But actually, you know, if you're in that for that right in the middle of average, if you like, the good news is you can get some real ROI from from a little bit of investment, can't you? Yeah, exactly, exactly. And I think the other thing as well is remember, Savills are like they're nationwide, and if you look deeper, they're global. Yeah. yeah, Knight Frank are doing loads of stuff abroad as well. If you're, you know, if you've got Savills with this massive widespread, ver spread very, very thin, it's yeah. still one website, but spread very, well, I mean, there are technically multiple, it's one site across lots of domains and it, it's spread quite thin. So if you've got five or 10 or even two or three branches and you're absolutely specialist and your home, your homepage web website title that appears on Google actually just says, um, you know, estate agents hyphen, and then yeah. two locations, you know, St. Albans and Luton. Your whole website is geared at St. Albans and Luton. Yeah. So Google is probably going to still show, you know, Foxes, Knight Frank, Savills, et cetera, if, if relevant. Et cetera. But you're, you're going to be able to compete against those guys in your local area pretty well because you can put an attention to detail on that and talk about the local area. They'll never be able to include, you know, de a decent sort of schools checker, recent developments, what's going on. They don't have that local knowledge because they're not local people in the same yeah. way they try to when we've you know we we're not working with any of the big ones at the moment we have worked with some of the names 
um, you know, some of the larger names in the industry. And they're trying to have a bit like the kind of HSBC, your local bank sort of thing. They're trying mm. to have that local focus. The actual people themselves are local, yeah. but they're, they're, their hands are, the bigger the organization, their hands, and I won't name who, but one of the really big estate agents, all the website stuff is done in Switzerland. And it's, there's, it's all oil tanker stuff, though, isn't it? It's really difficult to change direction, to be nimble yeah. when you're managing all those different departments, you know. All those well, the local agent can't even write content on their own site. It's all managed externally. So they submit like a, literally a Word doc saying we want this change to this. Wow. Six months later of chasing, it's like, oh, no, sorry, it got disapproved and no one told you. And it's like that's what they're dealing with internally. Your website, we've got, you know, even with a sort of 30 branch um, client, every three months, one of the partners is on our catch up calls. And we say, because you're here today, there's some bigger stuff that we're going to need you to sign off. And here's why we want to do it. And they're like, what? We could really get an extra 100,000 visitors a month to our site by doing that sort of thing to it. I'm like. Yeah, it's going to cost 15 grand for the web guys. We've already done all of the work at our end, though. But 15 grand, that's what, three, four properties sold? And if this works, you get 100,000 more local searches. How much quicker are you going to sell properties and how much quicker are you going to being, get more buyers? By being more nimble, by being more uh, hyper-local, as the phrase is, isn't it? That's yeah. what you can get back. Cool. So, so, so Nick, talk to us about, obviously, you've talked, we'll, we'll come back to the consultancy there, but with, with most of what we're talking about here, is it imperative to have a new uh, website or is there, uh, or, or, or what would you advise? That's always the big, that's always the big question. I think if it's not working, if it's not working and there's, and it, but we also we're quite good at weighing up what the internal political appetite is to do stuff. And I think that's really, really key. Yeah. If the senior partners are saying to us, yeah, do you know what? We need to get a new site. It looks rubbish. It doesn't reflect us. What are the options? We'll then help them. We'll note down, you know, what are the frustrations with the design? Why doesn't it work? And then we'll look at that. And then we'll advise from an SEO spec to say, this is what then the migration plan is. And um, equally, a lot of sites don't need to be revamped. I think most sites these days, you can edit the design. The web guys could even do a design refresh, the same site, same content, design refresh. And we can, we can pitch into that and say, we want a, new, a few new elements on the page. Like we want reviews, we want breadcrumbs, stuff like that. That's actually going to appear on Google, make your listings bigger, more people click. The more people click, the higher the rankings. The more people click, the higher the rankings because you've now got more people on the site and the design's improved, so the bounce rates have dropped, all that sort of stuff. So we'll weigh up these options but generally speaking there's few websites we can't make quite a big impact to and if there's a bit of a oh we can't quite decide and we say well we do want one why don't we optimize the current site and once we can prove that you've sold an extra 10 20 houses per month as a result of what we have been helping you do well you've got your funding for the new site now and actually you know how much is a how much is the commission to an estate agent it's pretty pretty lucrative so actually you know, we're not we're not going to be sort of beating around the bush and going, well, we could put a thousand pounds at it. It's going to be more like, well, we've got 20 grand now. Should we stay on the same platform? Should we move platform? Should we talk to Web Daddy, et cetera? But we can, you know, we, we always take the approach when we pitch the clients. We're pitching for five years here. You can yeah. get out pretty much whenever you want. Like, you know, we have a bit of a notice period, but we're pitching for five years. So we're going to go through this at least once or twice anyway. <laughs> You're taking your pulse, really, of where they are as a business, where the appetite is, isn't it? So if they have just had a massive spend on it, um, you're not going to go straight in and try and do the hard sell on a website, is the sound like Exactly. So, so, I mean, just just as a, another separate question there is, so agents instinctively don't like paying for traffic. Should we pay for traffic, or do we need to get mm -hmm. over that? Uh, is that just um, – is, is, is it because so many agents have had, you know, have – done the proverbial and poured you know money down a hole and not had a had, like had right a, move or zoopla which is a hole well yeah well there you go so you're talk, funding their growth not yours unfortunately that's the that, yeah that's all, yeah you're, you're out, of, out of control aren't you there hmm. i think yeah there's in the seo world google used to ignore if you had paid for a listing on a website that's very different to advertising so if you had paid just to have like an organic feature on mum's net Google know you've paid for it. They'll go, mums that aren't really endorsing you, you've paid to be there. Um, but if it's useful for customers, then it does have a positive impact. Separate to that is advertising, which is Google advertising. Um, the, the real crux is if it works, you need to tie up your reporting, work out a budget that you're probably for three months. You know, what are we happy to throw at a wall, even if nothing sticks for three months? And then we need to be able to monitor what leads are generated from PPC, the specific leads themselves. And we've generated a bit of our own technology and a couple of our own sort of custom scripts we can put on people's websites to marry up what was an ID number within your CRM system 
for each each click we've had from Google if they filled out a form. So yeah. things like that are really key. Then we can run an ROI report from the CRM system, just pulling out what we know is definitely a PP, PPC bought them to the site, you know, an, adver, an advert bought them to the site. They then inquired and went on to sell their home with us or buy their home or at least just qualified. We might draw a line at that point, but they've qualified that they are interested and they've sent us their property details or they've told us what we're looking for and we're now emailing them properties they could buy, etc. Um, I think that sort of approach is exactly what is needed. And actually, given where databases and tools are now, it's easier to get that information than ever on a non-e-commerce website. So I would, I would say it's pound for pound. Yeah, if it's you know if you can afford two grand a month to throw at it and you've got five branches, that sounds like a decent budget to me. We'll manage it. We'll get some things running for you. We'll target the obvious. We'll also pick out any SEO keywords we've been targeting that we just you know we're, we're still on page two. We just can't get to, can't quite get to page one, but we know they'll work if we get there because other similar keywords or in other locations geographically are working on that sense. Well, let's target those. Let's drive more people into the site, monitor what's going on, and if we can prove it's worked, then you're going to be pouring more investment into it. And it's a really good place to grow. If it's not worked, then it's a case of well, as soon as we can prove it's not worked and work out why, well, let's turn it off. You know, well, let's turn it off until we work out why because it is in real time. You can click the pause button and then we'll work out a way of making it working. It's we use the phrase pound for pound. What have you spent? What have you made? Yeah, so it's a lovely way of looking at it. And, and Nick, is there a? Uh, do you have to be a certain size to make this work? Is this is this out of the out of the reaches of the smaller agents? Um, you know, mm. to have this kind of consultative approach. Just talk us through. Is it? You know, do you really need to be able to get to that level of sure. you know talking about two thousand or whatever else, or do you cut your cloth accordingly based around the requirements of the smaller agent? Yeah, so I mean, we've we've got an offer on our kerfuffle page that I'll you know shamelessly plug. I can't remember the exact number offhand, if I'm honest, but um, there is a discount on there. I think it's just over a thousand per yeah, month. Yeah. I think let's just have a. Uh, I think it's probably- yeah, if you want to dig that out, but I mean, we've all, we've always tried to position our fee based on what we're going to help the client get out on the other end. Um, yeah. There we go. So yeah, so we do a free audit, which is yeah. that will give you some quick wins anyway. So if anybody wants it, go and click that button, of course. Um, But if you go to the pricing section, I'm pretty sure I filled out something on here. No, we didn't. So, yeah, we we have a discount that we offer to Web Daddy clients and the same with Kerfuffle clients. So we'll put our normal price, which for SEO is a sort of £1,500 a month up. Uh, PPC is £500 a month up. But then PPC becomes a percentage. That's our minimum fee. It becomes a percentage as you grow. You're only going to grow if we can prove, and I mean really prove, that it's working literally to say you sold these properties as a result of our work you know yeah. what we're doing on here and that was their media spend plus our fees sort of thing yeah. um so yeah that's where we start but yeah we do have a little discount um i'll dig out the exact number if anybody does want to you know have a so conversation but the key again is it's you know you are it, well, first of all it, it's much easier mm. to measure things in this digital age anyway but secondly uh, you've sure. mentioned a few challenges that you are desperate to show mm is working as well because obviously obviously the more you do that the more that they will feel confident investing yeah if the mechanic can't show you that your clutch on the car now works you're not going to go and use the mechanic again are you and if your clutch is gone then your car's probably at an age where it's going to need stuff all the time it's within their interest to show you that they're a good mechanic i'm not Um, sure i'd I'd even know one way or the other but that's that's (laughs) can you change gear yes or no that's the conclusion but i think the yeah i think for for us we we want to scale with our clients so our fees go up as they grow For a single branch, I think the thing you really, really need to look at is the obvious. You know, how much is a customer worth to us? If we sell a property, what does that make? And I think whatever agency or supplier you use for anything, if they're generating new business or supporting on marketing or doing your web stuff, you need to be open with them and say, look, our revenue looks like this at the moment. These are the things we think we need to do to increase that. And that's what we're going to be measuring you guys against. Like I do it with some of my team as well. Some of my team run a couple of other small divisions of spec that we companies we bought recently and merged in. Um, and one of them, you know, we, we just look at it on a quarterly basis and say, how, you know, half your role is sales and half of your role is keeping our clients happy and moving them forward. So how many clients have we signed and what's the average client duration right now? What's the longest, the shortest? It's the same sort of thing for a stage. I think let's look at how much is the average house sale? How many do you have a month? Where do they come from? And if you can't answer that, we might say, well, look, pay us this much for the first three months. We're going to do all of this. And part of that will be we're going to help you install the right tracking because that's part of this journey that we're now going to go on together. And I think that is absolutely critical. Again, a lot of agencies and one of the reasons I tried to get out of the industry and one of the reasons I stayed in is agencies, they wash their hands as soon as they clicked onto the site. They're like, we're not your web guys. We're not designers. We're not UX. Well, we're not any of that either. 
But for example, if we need to run a webinar for our franchise client every month to give the franchisees a bit of help with how to manage Google Maps and social and what they can do to boost the overall SEO of the site, that's what we've put in place. Um, you know, last week we were uploading content to a site. We uploaded about 500 pages of content from 250 different people that were emailed to us and just said to the client, can you pay us a couple of days and we'll, we'll get all this done for you because that's becoming a roadblock. Other clients have said, oh, web guys are so slow. And we've said, well, do you want us to have a look? Are they actually slow? Are you not communicating correctly? Do you want us to talk directly to them? Will that speed things up? Or do you need a new agency? You know, we're agency agnostic here and partner agnostics. So I think for us, it really is the kind of, and I, I, I need to check this. I quote this sort of two or three times a day, but I think, I think it was Genghis Khan, the kind of by any means. So we're going to help you grow your business by any means. We know people are searching on Google. We just need to connect that with your business now and turn that into monitored and reported revenue. And that, that's got to be the focus for, for anything we do. And with estate agents, again, we've worked with, we work with quite a few. We've got quite a few on our books at the moment, hence why we joined Kerfuffle. We know what we're doing. We know the obvious stuff to, to look at. And a lot of the problems we get are not unique, you know, which is, which is good. It's all, here's how we need to approach this and how we need to solve it. Attractive things, Nick, about the idea where you're coming from is, first of all, that you have, mm. you know, you have to work obviously with agency, you understand, you can empathize, you understand the individual challenges. But then secondly, you've also got this wealth of knowledge outside from, you know, places like retail where they are doing some really exciting stuff. So you can bring the best of both worlds, can't you, to challenge the status quo and also to be able to, to understand what's working in this particular industry. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. I think I think that's it. I mean, we just we used to have this thing written up on our wall, which was from the uh, GB Olympic team. Will it make the boat go faster? And we've taken that approach. And actually, to be really frank, we're not the best content writers. We don't we, we write content when it's a roadblock. Not it's not part of our proposal. It's not part of our makeup. But we're pretty good at it, and we send it to the clients and then approve, you know, and check and that sort of thing. And um, we're not the best developers in the world. So there are better technical SEO agencies out there. But actually, those aren't the things that make the boat go faster. What we're really good at is going, customers are looking for that and you're not talking about it. Or actually, the, the journey is just rubbish. This is what the journey needs to look like. Here's an example of how it could look. And then the call to action needs to be this. And then if the client's like, well, that's going to cost us tens of thousands to make that happen, we might go, well, why don't we launch a, a bit of a micro site, run some PPC and send traffic to the micro site just to test it. Let's use Unbounce or a platform where you can just drag and drop content. That converts better. Well, we've answered the question. If it doesn't then That's absolutely fine. It's not cost as much. I'm a massive fan of landing pages and I've used Unbounce before. Um, mm. And where do, is that what it's, what is, is that what they should be used for when they are easy to deploy to, to, to really d discover, um, you know, to prove the concept there, but should, what place does landing pages serve is what I'm trying to get at. Cause should it always be then adopted into the main website if it works? Well, I'm not a fan of them on the whole. I'm a fan of using them for testing. Yeah. Where I'm not a fan is we always take the approach of if you run a campaign, if it works, you want to make it evergreen. So yeah. landing pages, it's all right for like, I mean, some people might have thought out a landing page thing to find out about this event or, you know, we're running an event with Web Daddy. Um, we do one a year. We might do two this year as well. We run them on Eventbrite and Eventbrite sort of, it's a landing page. Yeah. Well, actually, that's because it's got a specific purpose and it is a timed thing. Yeah. But I think if the website's not working, fix the website. Because if it's going to work for PPC, it should work as well for SEO. And then you're on both sides and you've got your Google Maps sorted out and you link the whole lot together. So you've got three and then possibly Yell and other sites. You've got a whole load of sites linking to one place now. And it's just, it's just a good experience. You've got one place to manage and one place that's evergreen. And actually, I think one of the issues with landing pages is because there is no main menu and you can't click around and go off in other places – Customer trust is at its absolute low. So we find, that, we find that actually the people that fill out the form, you might get a higher conversion rate. More people fill out the form as a percentage. Yeah. But actually the quality of leads is really low because if I'm thinking of selling my home yeah. and I land on a landing page, I'm like, who are these jokers? I was, feels, that's not my expectation. It like, feels yeah. like a, a digital hard sell. Exactly. I want to see – I don't want to sign up to an event. I don't want a white paper. I want to see what properties you're selling at the moment. I will see who your staff are where your branch is and why you're the estate agent for me. I want to see how good your photography is, stuff yeah. like that, because that's what's going to help me sell my home. I want to see what your advice is going to be like in terms of value and is there other quick ways I can increase that? Is that something you offer as part of your service? No, none of our estate agent clients do, and I don't know if any estate agents do, but those are the pressure points. How are you going to help me sell my house for more, sell it faster and make this seamless for me? And Nick, how do you tell the difference between targeting buyers and sellers uh, or renters and landlords? How do you, how do, you do that? 
I, mostly done with keywords. So if somebody says, you know, uh, lettings in Bristol, um, they might be a buyer or a seller, or sorry, a buyer or a, a renter or a letter. We don't really know yet. But um, letting agents, that is always going to be a, that's always going to be somebody with a property to let out. Um, estate agents is generally going to be a seller. And then the buy keywords are where you'll get the complete mix. So yeah. that's often where we can kind of split the two. The proof's in the pudding. If they inquire about a property, obviously a buyer. And if they <laughs> inquire about, um, you know, estate agency services or get in touch with the selling team or the sales team, probably a seller. So I think, yeah, there's, there's ways to do that. And Google Analytics really is your friend on this. They're going to give you all the information that you need to manage that and, and work out um, and work out what that looks like. And, and then just a quick question here. Somebody's just jumped in with actually just uh, any tips on SEO backlinks? Backlinks. Right. So I'll give you a tiny, tiny history lesson. Google, one, once upon a time, Google was uh, good, but not great yet. And it hadn't matured and its systems weren't very advanced. Yeah. So what Google did is it said, look, we'll count any links to your website. And each one's worth one point or a vote, as yeah. it was often spoken about. And they would total those up. And then that would go into your SEO. So most votes wins, right? Simple. And then every time you mention the keyword on one of those pages, you get a second vote. Um, I'm really simplifying it. It wasn't quite as simple as this, but complete simplification. And then every time you mention the keyword on your website, another vote. So every link coming in could be one, possibly two votes. Every mention of the keyword on your website was another vote. So that's why people used to put white text at font size 0.1 on a white background. Yeah. Just spam the words like, you know, <laughs> IT. IT services London and all our competitors added 10 more pages. Well, let's add 20, you know, yeah. stupid. So Google updated one day and all of those guys got what's called sandboxed. They had no traffic from Google overnight, completely gone, absolute car crash. I can safely say we've, we've, we've dealt with some of those, but we've never had that happen. So we, we were there to pick up the pieces and sometimes it was a rebrand of the business and yeah. they didn't want to hear that, but it was like, a, I'd rather say that in the pitch than take your money and, you know, three months later, we've had a bit of cash and an absolute nightmare and I haven't slept for two days. So we won't do that. Um, but yeah, backlinks. What you want to focus on is two things. You want to focus on one is quality. And the yeah. second thing you want to focus on after quality is customer engagement. So the best backlink is something that says a good thing about you. Yeah. It doesn't matter if it was generated necessarily by you or not. It says a good thing about you. And it also drives traffic. So if you go into analytics and click on referrals, and you can see traffic coming in. It's not a requirement. So, for example, if the BBC said, and we caught up with so-and-so from the local estate agent in, Nor in Norwich, you know, and they told us that the Broadlands across Norwich are having this happening at the moment and house prices have gone up and whatever. Yeah. Even if it doesn't link to you, Google's going to associate, you know, this estate agency with your site because your site is the only site that is an absolute authority on that name because you're the only one that's completely talking about your brand, the name of your estate agency. Yep. Um, so that, you know, it's it was Foxton's. You're the only business in the world that talks about Foxton's, well, the only business in the UK, Foxton's.com talks about Foxton's, et cetera. But if you've got a mention in the, in the BBC, even if that didn't drive traffic, it's still good. But if it did drive traffic, all the better, because that's going to generate leads for you. So that's why Google Maps is amazing, because it comes up at the top. It's completely yeah. free. Yeah, um, so yeah, you get, because people are looking locally, like, if I'm looking for a house, what I'm not going to type into Google is houses for sale. What I am going to type in is houses for sale Edinburgh, because that's where I might be moving, for example. So, Because I, I really, I use maps as almost my mm. primary search. That's why I was so interested here. There was, I don't know mm. if you remember, there used to be a property portal called Globricks, which literally the, the whole search functionality was literally the Google Maps, basically, to do it. And that was how, rather than going in and typing in niche areas and descriptive areas and everything else, I just you would just roam around the map. And I do that when I'm on whatever it is, my mobile device or anything else out there. How... Uh, how prevalent is, is uh, you know, is that in the in the population? You know, as a demographic, is is it is it a minority of people that search like that, or is it a growing but important demographic? Well, if you do a geographical localized search on Google itself, maps will pop up anyway, whether yeah. you're in the maps area or not. So yes, it is massively important. So if you if you put in any kind of location, or if you're on a device like I'm on a Mac right now, which has a location you know, location function. So if I, in fact, I'm going to do it right now. If I search houses for sale, yeah, I've instantly got, uh, I mean, it's coming up in London all over the place. I'm in Surrey, but I'm just outside London and it's popped up with right move and everybody else in London. So it knows where I am. The maps bit hasn't popped up. But if I search yeah. estate agents, then it does pop up all these maps pins that have the words estate agents in their title. If you go yeah. on maps, 
the, the proof's in the pudding. So on your Google Maps pin, there is an analytics reporting area and you can see how many times it's appeared in search results, which is called an impression. Then you can yeah. see how many times people have engaged with the pin, how many people have clicked on your website, clicked on phone calls, looked at your pictures, read your reviews, submitted reviews, all that sort of stuff. So you can, the proof's in the pudding. And we've had like a local, um, a local estate agent in one uh, town get 150,000 times a month. People are finding their pin. And we put it in our reports, of course, because it's, it's a good measure of, you know, we, we updated it again three months ago and look at the extra traffic and exposure we're now getting. And it yeah. can be massive. You know, a lot, certainly during lockdown, a lot of people have spent a lot of their lives, myself included, looking at houses and going, well, if I can't go out right now, I'm going to dream about going out and have a plan that when I am allowed out, here's what I'm going to go and do. So, to, I mean, a fantastic hour just going through it. And I could genuinely, we'll have to get you on uh, very shortly again to, to, to dig ever deeper into all of this. Yeah, I'd love to. What's the what's the best way, Nick, of of, uh, of people getting involved with you guys, and what does onboarding or the research process take? Uh, you know, th there's that obviously that that kind offer you put in there in terms of the initial consultancy. Just talk us through what a normal kind of engagement with you guys at Spec is about. Yeah, definitely. So I think best thing to do is go on Kerfuffle, click through to us from there because obviously it was generated via Kerfuffle, and you know we're keen to you know ourselves we're keen to measure what platforms are working for us. Um, yeah, so go on Kerfuffle, click, get the free audit. That's the best place to start, I think. Um, yeah. We've done quite a lot of um, we've done quite a lot of these free audits. We don't do them for everybody. We don't offer them across the board normally. And some businesses don't need them, don't want them. They just want a quick one page. Yeah. What are you going to do in month one? That will then generate a time timeline for us. We know what projects are involved after that. Then we'll sign up a retainer. I think this is kind of bypassing that for free. Well, yeah. not bypassing, but replacing that for free. I think. Best is go on our page on Kerfuffle. It's spec. I think it's spec digital. We put in because that's our yeah. official company's sure. house name. So yeah, go and go and find us on on Kerfuffle. Click click for the free audit. As you can see, Simon sharing his screen there. Um, yeah, so click on the free audit. I'm interested. To contact me. We've had a, a few people click it already, which has been great. So we're um, yeah, just following up with those guys. I think in fact, I think one of you might be on here. I won't shout you out directly as we're not on the radio. But um, <laughs> go and click on that. And then what what, what it looks like next is. We'll probably have a quick chat with you before we do the audit because we want to get access into analytics. We'll sign an NDA if you want one as well. They're not required by law. We're not going to share any information third party because that's the law. Um, but if you want one anyway, then we can talk openly about specific customers and things if that's what you want to include. We'll then come back and go, look, we've had a look at everything. This is what your traffic profile looks like at the moment. This is where SEO is at. This is what it looks like people have tried to do from PPC if there is any. This is where some other sites are sending traffic here. You may or may not know that. And therefore, if you want to come on board with us, Here's going to be the price. The first three months are a bit of a trial. You can leave whenever you want. There's no notice period. Um, we're going to make sure this works. So we're going to overinvest in you up front. We're not yeah. going to underinvest in you later. But what we are going to do is set you up on the right foot, you know, right footing where it becomes super productive for us and you as well. So we don't have to have kind of constant catch ups. You know exactly what we're working on and what we're not going to do and what we hear a lot from certainly estate agents and I'll be really, really honest, a lot of estate agents try and they try and sort of skim through on cheap budgets. Yeah. SEO is one of those things that if you just pay someone to write some blog posts and stuff, use your brain. Customers couldn't care less about a few blog posts. They're not going to read them. And if someone's looking to sell their home, as if their search term on Google is going to be um, top school results this year, it might be part of their journey. But what they're looking for really is just an estate agent. They've done all that research. That's yeah. where you really want to catch them. So I think... We've had people where someone's you know, been paying a grand a month, which is not too dissimilar to our fees, yeah. for someone to be doing SEO and just sort of leave them to it and the reports come in and they look great. And then we've looked, we're like, well, the site hasn't changed. The code's been the same for the last year. The content's been exactly the same. I, I can't tell you what they have done. Right. They've not made any recommendations. And certainly as well, we're a consultancy. We work in partnership with our clients. We'll be on the phone. You guys will be doing stuff. We'll be doing stuff. You bring questions to us. You know, we've got a new homes development. Should we create a new page? Should we just put the homes themselves into the listings? And we'll go, well, that's a really interesting concept, actually. We'll look at some of the data and we'll come back to you in the next couple of days with an answer on that. Mm -hmm. That's a consultancy. And we'll come back going, there's an SEO opportunity. Let's do it like this. Let's build these pages. Here's some content examples for it. And, you know, in, in two to three weeks' time, we'll see if we're ranking for those keywords. And we'll add them into our tracker. You've got real-time access to reports. We'll train you on what to look at. So I think that that's one of the big, big sticking points I find is that, a lot of people have been burnt and I'm, I'm sorry for you guys. It wasn't by me and we'll make sure that doesn't happen. And you've certainly got, you know, you've got the first three months to run away. If you can't prove what we're doing, we're not worth the money. So just, just fire us and we'll just bill you up to that day. And that's the end of it. 
if we stop working with you in the first three months, absolute waste of my time. I'll be very angry with my staff and we'll be having conversations internally of like, where has this gone wrong? Um, yeah. I think to, to date, yeah. unless it's been an agreed, it was a... You should, you should, you're looking at this for a five year. That's, that's where, you, you know, it works in the lifetime value of a client. Exactly. We've got a couple of our agents recently asked us, where should we open our next branch? And we said, that's a great question. Have you got a list of options? We'll look at the SEO data. What's the competitiveness in those areas? And then we'll also advise you on your existing site. At what point do we need to then change the way the site works to incorporate more branches? So we might be able to add, if you're currently at three, we might suggest, well, actually at 10, let's have a rethink. Because then when we've got 10, we can't list all of them on the homepage. You know, we might, or we might change the way it looks to incorporate the 10. So again, like looking five years ahead. That's perfect. So there's the, there's the, there's the title of our next one. I love that idea of almost a, a digital due diligence check, isn't it, to see how you should be expanding before you take the big you know the big the big jump and investing in a new office and okay. expanding to an area. That's fantastic. Okay, so so Nick, uh, thank you very much. That's been such a fascinating hour. Sorry, we run over a bit. We said thirty minutes earlier, yeah. but uh, no, I thoroughly love the conversation. This has been great. It's, it's absolutely fantastic and I can understand why you are so popular with your, your clients. So I'm encouraging anyone to drop you a line and take advantage of that because, as you said Thank yourself, you. Look, it, you are putting, you know, it takes a lot of time to do those audits. I know that they aren't just rinse and repeat. They're looking individually at your businesses. So, you know, please yeah. only take advantage of that if you're really serious and want to, want to you know, tap into their their, their, their their learnings and everything else. But for me, yeah. the Key takeaways in terms of clarity on how to generate leads to your website, thinking that through very, you know, to make sure you get the most out of it. Quick wins on how to improve things today and then the right questions to be asking of your existing web or marketing suppliers. All three of these are, are angles that you can help them out with if you go undertake that audit, yeah? Sure, exactly. Yeah, the, the audits, to be really open, the audit is a glorified proposal but it's not based on we're going to find this out and then we might do this. It will be, it will be a much more bulletproof, you know, the three main areas of SEO, content, technical, offsite. This is good. This is bad. This we do need to look at. But let's part that for six months because we don't want to send traffic into the site in the right place. So it'll uncover that. So we, we don't use the word proposal that often. We do sometimes call the documents that. It's more of a plan. What is the SEO plan? And you're very welcome to take it and try and do it yourself and come back and say, look, we've done as much as we can, but we're in a mess. And some yeah. people do do that. And so we've been a bit careful to go giving you too much and then you've gone well that was bad advice because it's not worked or yeah so we, we try and keep it as watered down as possible but to make a clear plan and say look if we can help you do this this is how much more traffic we can generate to the site this is what keywords are going to start to look like and if we build a proper list it's probably going to be about this 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 size in length and that kind of thing and we also at the moment we do have an exclusivity of all the agents we've taken on recently we've got no crossover in terms of geographics okay. that is going to be a challenge for us because if we've got a big insurance company on our books we don't take on another one if, there are, if we've got three small insurers, it's slightly different. But if we've got one major player, um, yeah. estate agents there, if we do have two both targeting Dartford, yeah. then we've got an issue. So well, we're not going to have that one day. So we'll, uh, we'll have to see what we're going to do at that, that stage. Well, I can certainly see the value here. As you said, it's over, worth over £1,500. I, uh, I, I think you're under, uh, undervaluing yourself there, to be honest. But look, mm. I encourage anyone to get in, in touch with you and Spec Digital. It's been a fascinating hour and a bit for me, Nick. Thank you once more for getting on the platform and hope it all works out for you. Great. Well, thanks so much, Simon. I, yeah, if you ever need me back, I'm, I'm all ears. I love, uh, love doing stuff like this. Thanks a lot. Cheers.